Hey. Uh, right there, you're looking at a pinkish, well, getting close, uh, getting close to red Nile. Uh, so, you may wish to look at that, perhaps, in, uh, might be there somewhere in the Revelations or in something uh, that Moses did many years ago. Uh, and something with the plagues as well. So you're seeing a beautiful pink uh, sky here tonight. Uh, still in Luxor, Egypt. So I'm keeping an eye on that pink reddish river there, the Nile, as you can see. Uh, very important. Very chew I had seen last evening. I uh, had took a picture of what uh, would look like the moon being red as well. Uh, these are significant signs too for where we are at in the revelations. And I put out a, a post earlier today uh, saying, you know, that all of the signs with the revelations have for the most part come to pass. Okay, I guess we're still rolling a bit. Uh, however, Live from up here. The internet is not very really great here uh, in uh, Luxor since we've been here, so that's why I've not been uh, doing very many lives at all. Uh, however, uh, I will try perhaps a new location uh, tonight or uh, the following day and see if I can do a live from there. But I just wanted to share, you know, some of the pink, uh, beautiful sky with you. And, uh, of course, the pink Nile, anyhow. <laughs> so that is beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to look around perhaps at uh, uh, someone blowing their horn at me. And I'm way up on the roof, so my light must be shining bright. They saw me. <laughs> just joking <laughs> yeah so beautiful pink in Luxor Egypt here on this beautiful uh, July whatever it is the 6th I believe uh, so there we go and of course a white dove comes right over there uh, and sat yesterday again uh, so the grace of God, if you will, is beautiful and a timely appearance uh, with an eagle uh, this morning again. And the last few days, uh, Shelley Saul and I were uh, having an important uh, discussion a few days ago. And uh, uh, just when we were having the discussion, she's in Carolina, uh, North Carolina, I believe, uh, an eagle came and sat right beside her somewhere on a fence post. So, uh, but the topic then we were speaking about, uh, uh, the seven trumpets and seven seals and what have you. And of course, uh, you know, the eagle is one of, matter of fact, I believe that's the eagle flying right there. There we go. <laughs> See it right in the center? Uh, thank you so much uh, for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> As we all say, you, you can't make this uh, stuff up. I'll turn the, see if I can turn the camera around. Here we go, and I'm even pink. Look at this. Woo! Love <laughs> and uh, very good times we are in, uh, my friends, and uh, it's quite amazing. Um, uh, Femka is uh, back uh, visiting her family for a little bit before we uh, proceed to uh, Nepal. So uh, that is upcoming, and uh, as I put out earlier today, a uh, very important uh, progression or even a pilgrimage, uh, you may wish uh, to say. So that is upcoming. Uh, we still... I sp I see some hearts flowing, so I guess we're still doing okay here, as long as I'm not uh, cutting out or glitching. 
Uh, I may ramble on for a few more minutes. Not every day I get a chance now to do a live. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, all is great here. Uh, you know, for the most part, the divine work has been done. Um, so, the, as some referred to the triad of the eclipses that occurred, I think one was 4th of June and 21st of June and 5th of July. That triangulation, it was uh, very significant. And uh, also planetary alignment. So, the divine work encompassed... Uh, 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 cosmology and <laughs> whatever else, you know, it, it uh, connected a lot of things in there. So it was uh, a very great time, a very important time as well. So just looking uh, again, very beautiful sky here tonight. It's amazing and. Uh, Getting uh, reports from ones, uh, you know, with your gifts uh, becoming stronger. And, of course, the cool uh, uh, from Gretchen, uh, the cool post the other day, speaking about the crystals in the blood. And uh, very good and important. And I just got to light my cigarette. Now here we go, and cigarettes are pretty good tobacco here, and uh, pretty cheap, so that's good as well. Smoke here, uh, compared to Canada, so this is uh, very, very good. Yeah, so the temperatures, uh, I just checked for the next uh, 10 days here, 40 between 40 and 42 degrees in the daytime, and... Uh, was uh, 30, 29 or 30, I believe, in the nights, uh, somewhere around there. So it's staying uh, pretty warm here. Uh, however, you acclimatize uh, to the heat after a while, you know, as long as it doesn't go too much over 40 and you don't uh, move very quickly. Uh, you may perspire or sweat. And, uh, however, it's... Uh, Still very doable. So we're just uh, waiting uh, for Nepal to open up. Looking like uh, that opens up its uh, borders for international flights around uh, 22 of July. So uh, I already have a ticket booked for there. I was instructed by father to book a ticket. Uh, the price of the ticket was... Uh, U.S. was $444.40. So I took that as a good sign, and uh, I was instructed by Father to get it. Usually I only, uh, when I'm doing the divine work, usually I'm only given notice a few days in advance, but uh, with everything that has transpired uh, lately and with all the incredible work everyone is doing on Gaia, uh, finally, I was allowed to make some plans ahead of time, so great, and uh, as you can see, uh, I was finally allowed to put out uh, specific important dates and locations where, uh, you know, some or perhaps many of you may be uh, at those certain times, so those are important, and uh, Unless the divine plan changes, uh, which I don't see it changing, uh, I will be in those places on those dates. So, uh, Femka and I, so ending up, let's say, at Aluru in, uh, you know, December 21st, around there. And by that uh, point in time, we will uh, see how everything has uh, transitioned by then. Uh, just to recap a little bit, uh, the significance of the Himalayas around uh, the 21st of September is the opening of the crown chakra uh, of Gaia, but it also affects all of you. Uh, so you can see that being very 
uh, significant uh, to be in the Himalayas at that time. And third is that Uluru is the solar plexus, which is, you know, the seat of power, and it's down in your... Uh, it's your third chakra, I believe, or your fourth, depending on where you start from, uh, the bottom. And uh, you may look at it like a kind of a flip backwards, but no, it has to be this way. So the third eye crown chakra area is activated with the Himalayas to, uh, to give the consciousness, the higher consciousness to the people then once they have that higher consciousness in September, uh, between then and December, uh, there will be many great higher things, uh, higher things occurring, higher consciousness things, and a great change in everything upon the planet. And with that, uh, there will be leadership roles uh, by divine ones put in place. And Apparently, what occurs around December the 21st, uh, then the endorsed enhanced power uh, for the ones that were just awakened, uh, they are given their power to uh, control events and everything on the planet to uh, perhaps it could be 5D right at that time or uh, shortly thereafter to take it in. Uh, you know, as you're seeing the current leaders upon the planet, uh, uh, and they are being transitioned out for the most part. There are some that are in place that will transition. Uh, however, there are ones that will be replaced between now and December, uh, and perhaps a little bit afterward. And uh, you will see awakened ones higher consciousness ones taking uh, leadership roles and uh, to also uh, unite the peoples. So that is uh, divinely the outlook with that. However, again, uh, things could happen much more quicker. But uh, just being, you know, right out there with you, uh, it's looking like there might be a second uh, run uh, of the COVID uh, shutdown, uh, and this is being done divinely as well, uh, that that may need to occur to facilitate uh, where we will be at in December. So it's very possible that could occur. It could uh, at the end of July possibly be another shutdown for a couple months perhaps. That is a, a possible timeline. Uh, we have four timelines going, and uh, that is one of the timelines. So we'll see what occurs with that. And it, it is important to wake up the rest of the masses. The only way to really wake them up so quickly is to pressure them, take them out of their comfort zones. And, you know, even looking at them being locked in their house as long as they have enough food they're still comfortable but they're not uh, squeezed enough to stand up and take their power back you know they still give away their consent by being locked in their house so if they're uh, pressured a little bit more uh, money wise and also restricted what they can do uh, then they will tend to stand up more. So divinely, that is what is required, that the people have to have that uh, to take the power back, and that is a huge energetic thing. When they have that by December 21st, then uh, the power to temporarily administer everything on the planet is given to them, in the light and you know there will be no darkness no corruption this is about all of the races and creeds all of the people of the planet and it's to advance humanity where they should be in respect uh, to the rest of the universe and currently we are switching back and forth in timelines uh, from a future that has you know within days or weeks uh, first contact to two years before that. So we are fluctuating 
roughly energetically and dimensionally in a two-year period. Time is not constant here. So during this time, uh, many of you are going to be experiencing uh, uh, fluctuations in the space-time continuum. And also your bodily sensations, that feeling maybe uh, jerked upward very quickly, wobbling, a vertigo, uh, you know, dizziness, uh, blurred vision. All of these things will occur because we are sitting on the threshold uh, of an energetic uh, dimensional shift where we are preparing humanity for the fifth dimension. But currently we're in the fourth dimension and everything is energy and frequency. Uh, so again, just uh, trying to keep it simple uh, and trying to keep this short for now and I'll see how this turns out. That's what's occurring. So it's very common to have fluctuations, space and time. Items appear and disappear. Seeing different things, different animals, uh, seeing ships in the skies. Uh, all of these are very, uh, very real. And uh, it's because of your multidimensionality that we're able to uh, see and experience in more than one dimension at one time with these physical vessels. So they've been upgraded uh, very powerfully and uh, uh, to facilitate also this time. And it's connected with your divine gifts as well. I'll stop rambling because I'd be here all night up on the roof. And uh, a James Taylor song, Up on the Roof. Uh, we want a happy song, yeah. We sing a happy one. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah, we did it. So, I love you all, and thank you so much uh, for the support on this mission. And uh, it's so beautiful to see uh, so many of you I know there's a lot, but I'm seeing so many of you uh, also becoming more powerful along with, uh, you know, I and Femme and, and our abilities as we uh, raise up higher uh, Gaia. You know, your powers become stronger, new gifts come online, and uh, it's a very beautiful, most unprecedented, most auspicious time for you know, at least the last few thousand years, if not, uh, you know, let's go back 6,000 years. So everything is great. And this is a time that's been prophesied and spoke about uh, for millennia. And hey, we're here. We're right in the middle of it and uh, got her done. So I love you. Love and light. And thank you all so much. And have a beautiful evening. I may have another live within 24 hours if it works good. So thank you so much. Woo! Good night.